As we're speaking, I know you're very happy that uh, Ted Cruz has dropped out. CNN has confirmed John Kasich, the Ohio governor, he's dropping out as well. You're the only one left right now. Uh, that's good. That's good. You're just telling me this for the first time about John, and that's good. I'm, I think John's doing the right thing. Ohio, you know, is an important state. No Republican has ever been elected president of the United States uh, without winning Ohio. Well, I think John will be very, I've had a good relationship with John. He's got I, a lot of government experience in the Congress yeah, as a governor. I, I think John will be very helpful with Ohio, even as governor. But he says I, he doesn't want to be a vice president. Well, that could be. I mean, I, he said that. Would, I've heard Would him he say be someone it. you'd be interested in vetting? I would be interested in vetting John. I like John. I've had a good relationship with John. I've gotten along with him well. But John, will, whether he's vice president or not, I think he'll be very, very helpful with Ohio. Now, be honest with me. Did you ever think, almost a year ago, it was June, in this building, you were going down that escalator, that you would be the presumptive Republican presidential nominee? Well, I hoped. I mean, look, did I... Did you really I, hope? Did you... Was that just... Yeah, I did. I mean, you had 17 people, very capable people. I heard a lot of the pundits were saying this was the single greatest group of talent ever assembled for either party in terms of a group. It was also the largest group. So. I joined somewhat after I heard that statement, and I'm saying, what am I doing? I mean, I'm hearing these people. Did you, you know, really talk. think you could win? I guess. Otherwise, I don't think I would have done it. I'm not because sure. Because some I actually people thought you were doing it, you no, know, for some publicity, no, no, a no, whim, no. or whatever. I don't need publicity. I mean, I gave up a lot to do it. I, I, I was asked to do The Apprentice for two more years. I said, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I, I gave up a tremendous amount, and you know, got a little bit controversial for a while, and I lost certain licenses, which is, you know, not the biggest deal in my life, but it's, uh, uh, Macy's uh, didn't want to renew me because I thought I was a little bit controversial, which was, I think, a big mistake that they made. Uh, not very loyal. But, uh, you know, it's a pretty costly thing, what I did. Not just the cost of a campaign, which is, frankly, less. Uh, it's the cost of what I do. Now it's worked out well. I'm just very happy with the way it all worked out. But I guess... Do you pinch yourself sometimes and say, you well, know, I this is really happening? I, I don't think I would have run if I thought I couldn't have won. So I, I, I'm not sure I sat there and just said, I'm going to win. But subconsciously, I must have thought that I was going to win, and I felt I was going to win. Now, in recent weeks, and months, in fact, you've suggested the system is rigged, the yeah, Republican 100%. system is rigged. 100 percent. You still believe that? Oh, sure, 100 percent. But you got the nomination? Yeah, I don't mind. The only way I got it, I went for the knockout. You know, when I saw all these folks going out and getting delegates and they're, they're, you know, whining and dining people and bringing them to hotels and paying for hotel rooms, it's a bad system. It's a crooked system. And by the way, Bernie Sanders' system, that's also rigged. That's why he wins and he doesn't get anything out of it. But those are the, the rules. Those are the rules. They're not the rules. It's a dishonest system. And who gives out the superdelegates in terms of the Democrats? Who gives out the superdelegates? The bosses give out the superdelegates. Well, so these are elected party system, officials. Meaning the bosses. That system is rigged, and the Republican system is rigged, but much more in a much more sophisticated way. It's, I really think, I'm very proud of the fact that after all of these many, many decades of the delegate system, that I've been able to point out some real weaknesses, and I think they'll be changed. I think for the Republicans they'll be changed, and maybe for the Democrats. Yesterday, with this National Enquirer story, I just want you to clarify, you don't really believe that Ted I Cruz's say. father had anything to do with the assassination of President Kennedy? No, I don't. Because this was the story that was uh, in the National Enquirer. But here's the question. You're the Repu presumptive Republican presidential nominee. No, I wasn't. You were not then, at the time. But you were, well, last week you said you were, Excuse too. You me. thought you were. Well, it but was not announced until last Don't you think you need week. a higher standard, though, than to get involved in this well, kind of here's stuff? here's what happened. Uh, Ted Cruz's father seems like a nice guy. I don't know him, but seems like a nice guy. He made horrible statements about me. You know, pray, praying for bad things to happen to me, okay, essentially. I said, that's horrible. And I was on a show, one of your competitors, and they showed me the clip. I said, wow, that's horrible. This, it's not just a one-way street, you know, where I do something. It was a horrible statement. I was actually surprised by it. And during that, and when I said how bad it was that a man would say something like that, I said, well, why don't, some, why don't you read the various magazines, because it's not only there, it was put in numerous, where he has a picture of himself with Lee Harvey Oswald. I'm not saying they it was on conspired. The internet, but the National Enquirer put it on his cover. I'm just saying it was all over the place. I said, well, why don't you talk about that? That was it. I'm not saying he did it, 
but I'm just saying it was all over the place. But now that you're but the just, Republican well, wait, pres me. presumptive nominee, you have you have to have a higher standard than to repeat conspiratorial theories like that. First of all, I wasn't at the time. I didn't know if I was going to win Indiana or not. It ended up being a landslide. It was a tremendous victory, much bigger than anybody anticipated, including myself. They're incredible people out there, and I, I was. This was in the morning. Now by the afternoon, it looked like I was going to win, and then a little bit later, it looked like I was going to win big. So I was not a presumptive winner at that time. I was going against them. They were going against but me. Bottom but bottom line, you don't believe was, you don't believe in that conspiracy. Of course, I don't believe that. I, I wouldn't believe it, but I did say let people read it. A lot of people think the general election campaign has started today. You versus Hillary Clinton. This week, she said this about you. The leading Republican. Contender is the man who led the insidious birther movement to discredit the president's citizenship. We cannot let Barack Obama's legacy fall into Donald Trump's hands. Do you know who started the birther movement? Do you know who started it? Do you know who questioned his birth certificate, one of the first? Hillary Clinton. She's the one that started it. She brought it up years before it was brought up by me. And, you know, so she can talk. Look, here's a person under investigation by the FBI. She's only going to get the nomination because it's a rigged deal. And frankly, maybe she won't even be able to run. Now, I think she probably will because I think the Democrats will work it so that nothing happens to her, even though everything happened to other people that did far less. But James Comey, the FBI director, he's a serious guy. He's you have confidence guy. in him. If he thinks there are allegations that she may have violated, broken the law, he'll, he'll recommend that. I hope so. I hope You have true. confidence in him. I do have confidence. I don't know him. I do have confidence in him. Let, let, let me just clarify. The whole birther thing, where do you stand on that now? I don't talk about it anymore because every time I talk about it, it becomes a story. So I don't want to waste my time talking about it anymore. But she's uh, going to raise this issue against you. I don't care. It doesn't, I'm going to raise it against her. All right, let's talk a little bit about another story uh, that's come out. And, and I know you, you hated this article in GQ about your wife, Melania. Julia Yaffe wrote it. Uh, she posted Melania was dishonest and accurate. Uh, a very tough piece. But since then, some of your supporters have viciously attacked this woman, Julia Yaffe, with anti-Semitic attacks death threats. These people get so angry. What's your message to these people when something like that happens? I haven't read the article, but I heard it was a very inaccurate article. And I heard it was a nasty article. I'm married to a woman who's a very fine woman. She's a very fine woman. She doesn't need this, believe me. She was very, very successful. She did tremendously well as a top model. She made a lot of money. And, uh, and she's a nice person. And I guess some of the article says that she would go in at night and she would stay. She wasn't a party person. She, you know, it's not her thing. But this was a very, this is a very high quality woman who loves people and has a big heart. She doesn't need to be, have bad things said about her. And I heard the article was nasty. Now, I haven't read it, but I heard the article was not what it should be. They shouldn't be doing that with wives. I mean, they shouldn't be doing that. Melania, as a top model, they sent pictures around to Utah and it wasn't even you but know this, it wasn't even like a naked follow these anti-semitic oh, I don't death know about that I, I don't know anything about but, that you but mean, your message you mean fans be, of mine su su suppose that fans of yours hey, posting these you know, I, I know very angry you'll have to talk to them but about your message it. to these fans is I don't have a message to the fans a woman wrote a, a article that was inaccurate now I'm used to it I get such bad articles I get such the press is so dishonest Wolf I can't even tell you it's so dishonest there is nothing more dishonest than the media. Uh, and I know it better than anybody. And it's actually gotten to a point where it doesn't even bother me anymore. It's, it's gotten so ridiculous. I mean, I've had stories over the last couple of weeks that was so dishonest, knowingly dishonest. It's not a question like they're bad reporters. But you've worked knowingly. closely with the press, and it's helped elevate you. Uh, it's probably overall helped me, but I just still find them to be, I mean, the lies and the deception and the way they write, and I guess they do it for clicks or they do it to get people, I don't, I don't even know why they do it. You think a good, honest story would be better, um, and you know. So I, I do know that the story on Milano. First of all, nobody's going to read. The, not a lot of people would read it, except that you bring it up. But uh, I'd like to see my family treated at least fairly and nicely. She didn't, she didn't need a story like this.